All right. Dream space. Uh, dreaming your room space with text-driven panoramic texture propagation um, by TikTok and some other people. Um, the first image we have real-world scene reconstruction, which is nice. Um, that's pretty cool. So it, it takes this is what it takes in as an input, then it could generate all this stuff: the TV, the cameras, the roof. Zelda, it can make galaxies, it can portray anime on TVs, it can make everything a sci-fi futuristic. It can also create immersive VR experiences. Oh yeah. Dream Space allows users to personalize their own spaces appearances with text prompts and delivers Immersive VR experiences on HMD devices. Given a real world capture room, we generate enchanting and holistic mesh textures based on the user's textual inputs. While ensuring semantic consistency and spatial coherence, the sofa still retains its unrecognizable form as a sofa, but in fa fantasy styles. Abstracts. Diffusion-based methods have achieved prominent success in generating 2D forms of media, like images, videos. However, accomplishing proficiencies for scene-level texture, uh, texturing, and 3D spatial applications, XR VR remains constrained, primarily due to the intricate nature of 3D geometry and the necessity for a free viewpoint rendering. This paper proposes a novel indoor scene texturing framework, which delivers text-driven text texture generation with enchanting details and authentic spatial coherence. The key insight is to first imagine a stylized 60, 360 degree panoramic texture from the central viewpoint of the scene and then propagate it to the rest, to the rest areas with impainting and imitating techniques. To ensure meaningful and aligned textures to the scene, we develop a novel course to find panoramic texture generation approach with a dual texture alignment which both considers the geometry and textual cues of the captured scenes. To survive from a cluttered geometry during textual propagation, we design a separate strategy which conducts texture impeding in confidential regions and then learns an implicit imitating network to synthesize textures included in tiny structured areas. Extensive experiments in the immersive VR experience on real world scenes demonstrate the high quality of the generated textures and the engaging experience on VR headsets. So, um, it seems they hopefully release code. Oh, they do. But it looks like, or maybe it's just like a GitHub page. But Jesus. there's a link at the top. So, oh, yeah, it's just a GitHub page. Dude. Lame. Why why would you release a paper without releasing code? This, the whole paper could just be faked. I don't know why yeah. people people keep doing this and this it's just so stupid. But we'll keep going. Because think about it, what what are you hiding? If if you already have the paper published, what what are you trying to hide? Yeah. At that point, you know, like these people, it's probably worse for these people who have something open source or well, just this, but there's no code. So that, you know, there's obviously a reason and that's probably the code is a mess. Wait, what could be a it might even be such a, such of a mess that it doesn't work at all. Um, yeah, this is a uh, engineer. Wow. 13 Can contributions. We... Dude, this is a week. These are some rookie numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I'll see people with rookie numbers put it out like big project. I wonder what that is. That's mostly just with the academics. Yeah. Real engineers They're will not. just push all day. Researchers and engineers are completely different. This this guy is a researcher. 
He's not an engineer. Engineers are like real time every day solving problems. Academics are like one experiment, move on next experiment. Mm -hmm. All right, but um, introduction. In our childhood, we might have imagined the world live we live in with fantasy looking that follows real world shapes, but beyond reality, such as skies, beds with fancy adventurous decorations, or even virtual windows which gaze upon the galaxy. Nowadays, with the advancement of HMND devices, which is VR, we have the ability to immerse ourselves in virtual scenes with 6D off rendering, which opens up the possibility of experiencing scene assets with very stylized textures. A following question is, can we realize the dream of a generating, generating fully immersive scenes with fantasy styles from reality by giving text prompts and automatically transferring details of our living room with enchanting and meaningful details? Over the past few years, enormous efforts have been made and have been paid in the fiend, in the field of scene stylization. Uh, existing methods either, either only transfer low-level styles, while semantically meaningful textures imitating Vagos paintings instead of generating recognizable visual elements or focus on textual editing. On 3D objects with nerf representation but struggle to uh, generate high fidelity textures for the whole space and achieve real time rendering on HMND devices. With the advancements of diffusion based generative models, stable diffusion has become feasible to synthesize images based on text prompts with pleasant looking while maintaining the same scene structure by adding depth edge conditions. Nevertheless, since perspective images views only convey a partial experience of the entire 3D scene, it's not trivial to automatically project it to 3D scenes, uh, 3D scene geometries. As a result, it usually requires skillful artists to run multiple generations and laboriously perform texture painting with 3D modeling. In this paper, we propose a novel driven indoor scene texturing framework, which allows to generate mean, meaningful and appealing mesh textures of real world scenes based on text prompts while preserving semantic consistency and spatial coherence. Um, we should consider the panoramic semantics and consistency in a unified process to ensure a seamlessly texturing result. To this end, they propose to texture scene meshes in a top-down manner, where we first generate an initial prompt panoramic texture at the central viewpoint in a panoramic diffusion process, and then propagate the panoramic texture to the rest of the regions. Meanwhile, both of the initial and the propagative textures will be baked into the resulting model meshes using UV maps, which can be uploaded into a commodity level uh, XR, VR, HMND device for immersive VR applications. Um, there are some challenges uh, when texturing on unstructured and clustered real world scenes to display Sharp and visually comfortable content on HMND devices, the desired panoramic texture should be high resolution, free of tealing seams to avoid the sense of spatial fragmentation and spatially coherent following the equatangular projection. Of all the furniture and room structure, such as the floor and ceiling should be recognized and not distorted. To fill all of the above demands, we employ a course to find panoramic texture generation strategy, where we first generate a low resolution panorama with a panorama diffusion model to ensure proper panoramic scene structure, and then upscale it to following equatangular scene fixing to achieve seamless and high resolution textures. Even with depth or edges as a conditioning input, existing diffusion models cannot ensure adequate alignment between geometry and textures. And such alignment would be inevitably introduce noticeable texture projection artifacts. We propose a novel dual texture alignment strategy where the style first textures and the alignment first textures would be generated and blended according to viewpoint depth changes. In this way, we effectively mitigate the geometry texture misalignment while preserving visually appearing appealing generative styles. 
Real-world constructed scenes often have intricate occlusions when observing from perspective views narrow spaces such as the gaps between the wall-mounted TV and the wall or floor areas under the sofa or thin structures like plant leaves or legs of the furniture, making it a challenge for viewpoint text painting to effectively cover every aspect of the scene. And to this end, we design a holistic texture propagation prop pipeline specifically for regions free of occlusion from the new viewpoint. We employ a diffusion-based uh, confidential texture and painting. Then we, uh, we leverage a coordinate-based um, implicit texture imitating network, which learns style mappings from real-world colors to stylized designs and imitates textures for the rest of the uncovered regions. By cooperating and painting and imitating techniques, our method smoothly propagates initial panoramic textures to the whole space while preserving spatial coherence. <sighs> we summarize the techno contributions as follows. First, they propose a novel scene level mesh texturing framework in a top-down panoramic manner, which allows users to engage, uh, generate engaging UV textures of real-world scenes of real-world uh, reconstructions based on text prompts. Second, we develop a course to find texture generation strategy to ensure the correct perspective and high resolution in a dual texture alignment mechanism to alleviate geometric, geometrical misalignment without compromising style quality. To cope with the cluttered real-world geometries, we design a holistic texture propagation paradigm with impainting and implicit imitation techniques, which smoothly paints in the entire space with coherent textures. Finally, extensive experiments on real-world datasets demonstrate that our model achieves significantly better scene-level mesh texturing quality than existing methods. Um, I'm going to skip the introduction or related works um, for the sake of simplicity, but it is a really important section and I do not recommend skipping that out by any means. Um, we'll slip to that figure. Yeah. So framework of dream space, given a real a reconstructed rule of scene and users, Text prompts, we first generate a high resolution and geometrically aligned panoramic texture at the central viewpoint, which is the center of the space, I can imagine. Then they propagate the textures in the rest of the regions with holistic texture propagation, where the confidential text and painting fills textures at the large confident areas in the implicit texture, imitating predicts colors at the tiny areas. The resulting scene meshes with baked uh, stylized UV textures can be uploaded into HMD devices for immersive VR touring. Um, so Xi-Fi Zelda. So take the scene, the whole scene. They do a central panoramic view. Then this both goes to panel uh, diffusion model then a dual texture text alignment, and then the output is a high resolution stylized panoramic view. It's kind of funny, people don't understand that panoramic pictures are artificial intelligence. Most picture, most daily, most people now have zero idea how much of their lives are already automated by AI. It's insane. Yeah. When you take a panoramic picture with your phone on iPhone, you're actually just using artificial intelligence. How do you think that creates yeah. itself? You think this just creates itself? Nah. It does not. Um, then the second stage, which is holistic texture propagation. So we have a partially textured scene and we project to a visible area. Or I, actually, we project to a visible area, then that's stylized to UV text. Then that's split into confident area, tiny area. So confidential texture and painting. At the top here, we have in painting viewpoint visibility filtering. So it's kind of like a camera is upward facing downward on the scene. Uh, 
geo representation. That's an impending viewpoint. So they're looking up into the middle. Then we're adding masked in painting. So basically what that means is we're just masking something like it's going invisible, but it might or might not still be there. So then implicit texture imitating. So we send in real colors, CR and C uh, coordinates. And we pass this into an imitating network and that outputs the stylized colors, which are CS. Then the last stage is dream spaces and VR, which a, which are fully stylized scenes with baked textures and immersive touring on HMD. Dude, so with this paper, what this paper is basically saying, they could generate scenes of games automatically now. Yeah. So they could they could fully generate an entire scene. Like end to end. Um that's pretty insane. So now I mean hopefully if all the the game developers knew of all the AI tools coming out, they could automate probably the entire process of making a game. Like the entire process. From coding to design to I mean everything. Scene representation. I think this oh, yeah. I definitely think this paper could help out the game and game developers like immediately. It could generate like entire scenes and just like from a simple picture and a text prompt. Um, uh, have you seen prompt to world? Huh? There's prompt to world now. Not open source app. No, useless, but, um, shoot, maybe it's, hold on, pull it up real quick. Um, let's see here. It's called Merrick. Dude, they added a black hole in the roof. A what? Oh. The whole room is just in a, a space. All right, I'm going to go over the method and then probably the conclusion and that'll be it. Um, it is a little bit thick. Oh, they have a cyberpunk theme. Where is it? Oh, too far. Too far, too far. What is cyberpunk? Oh. I see now. Dude, what I'm thinking about here, man, 
they could probably just generate like a bunch of rooms for like Batman Arkham games. I think that would be really cool. Um, okay. Kind of like an infinitely playable Batman game. That would be very cool. I would play that all day. Um, if we look at Arkham Knight fight scenes. It could probably generate these these like scenes pretty uh pretty well. So like an entire room like this, you know. You have some stuff on the ground, yeah. like uh, I don't know if I'd be able to do in this qual. Actually, it could be able to do this in this quality. Um. Like, like, check out the details. Like, Arkham Knight is still one of the most visually beautiful games ever. Um, I don't know if it could generate like a whole scene like this. Um, but or at least the space, not the like actual animations. But I think I think that would be cool. Um, that's what I think about. Or actually, I mean, if you have, if you have just an image, some real world applications of this paper I see, or may, I mean, maybe like for security, you're trying to like protect like a, someone high up in the government. You could use this and like try to like, I don't know, predict like the windows being broke. I, I don't know. Um, actually, the most important use case I could see for this paper is being generating scenes for video games. So, um, to generate the high resolution panoramic view with appropriate structure relationship and consistent semantic meaning, we devised a redesigning course to find primary panoramic texture generation process condition on, on a reconstructed uh, geometry and textural cube. And a dual alignment strategy is selected to alleviate texture misalignment due to the geometry. Once the initialized uh, style view is generated, we predict uh, textures to the visible area through UV maps and propagate it with con confidential texture and painting for visible areas and new points and implicit texture imitating for tiny ears so as to maintain a fully stylized seam mesh. Um, so generating in panoramic space, um, we urge that scene level consider Three full 360 degree view of the scene as a whole, generating a panoramic texture space, aka through Iker, Iker Rectangle Projection. What does this word mean? Which includes a spatial case is a simple map projection attributed to who? So is this, this is panoramic. Yeah, so this is panoramic. That's what I curve, I curve rectangular. I don't know how to say it. Um, so the projection maps meridians to vertical straight lines of consistent spacing for meridional intervals of consistent spacing and circles of latitude to horizontal straight lines of constant space. The projection is I, neither equal nor conformal because of the distortions introduced by this projection. Um, so, um, equidistical psychological projection includes the special case of Laplace, Laplace Curie projection, which is a map projection. Um,
Um, I'll be back in a sec. All right, I am back. Um, I curve rectangular projection rather than using multiple perspective or cube maps with perplexing viewpoint specific prompts. To this thing, given a user prompt and a reconstructed real world scene, our first attempt is to generate a vivid and highly uh, resolution stylized panoramic view that observes the scene from a central viewpoint. Which I can imagine is just the middle, the middle of the scene. Uh, while it is possible to use the depth-aware latent diffusion model to generate textures that fit to the observed scene depth, we find it is still faced with several challenges. Uh, existing generic or lower fine-tuned LDMs cannot ensure accurate rectangular problems. Project projection, which results in distorted texture when pr projecting back to the mesh. Second, the distributed, the desired panoramic texture should be high resolution. Um, 2K resolution or more and free of tilling seems to guarantee acceptable visual quality in immersive VR applications, which is not directly feasible for text generation methods, course to find condition generation. To handle the challenges above, we designed a course to find condition uh, paradigm where we first generate a low resolution panoramic view with a proper spatial structure and then upscale it to high, high resolution. They generate a, they first train a panoramic diffusion model by fine tuning a generic latent diffusion model with carefully filtered um, eye curve rectangular projected images. Um, next for an input texture C mesh, we render the panoramic colored image LP with a distance map and distance map D, distance from a camera center to mesh center at the same center and feed them together with user's prompts P to the fine-tuned LDM with multi-condition multi -condition controls to obtain stylized images 
LS as LS equals FC PD E IP. Um, LS equals FC times P and D and E times IP, where FC is the latent diffusion model with multi conditioning. Uh, EIP is the soft edge map extracted with the suit at L's work. During the inference, we adapt the asymmetric tunneling strategy by hijacking all the 2D convolutions of the unit with horizontal circular uh, padding for the last 60% time stops. So as to make sure the left and right side of the echo rectangular image can be continuous. Then we utilize the tile diffusion with the generic latent diffusion model to upscale the LS into ILSL, which produces three times larger panoramic images with extra rich details. Acro rectangular seam fit. During the upscaling stage, we find that the tile upscaling strategy would inevitably break the acro rectangular traits of the image. Patterns became no longer tilling along the horizontal direction, and the top and lower part of the panoramic are not the Correct stretching follows arco-rectangular projection. Primarily due to a reason that each process tile is agnostic to the pull perspective knowledge. Therefore, we also conduct a painting on the whole top-down polar and left-right tilling side of the image. Um, we unwrap the panorama to the upward and downward perspective and impates the central disk area and then warp it back. For the horizontal tilling scene, we roll the half image along the x-axis and, and paint the middle part that covers both left right sides of the panorama we can do we can obtain a highly resolution stylized panoramic images that satisfies eco rectangular projection and also maintains semantic coherence dual texture alignment dilemma of stylization and alignment although using def or hedges con as conditional control can effectively direct the LDM to produce somewhat co consistent textures to the uh, target mesh. We find in scene level texture, uh, text, uh, texturing tasks such alignment is not sufficient since the geometry of the world scenes is much more complicated than single objects. One workaround is to denoise uh, with moderate or small noises upon real image views, aka latent diffusion models image to image mode with lower denoising strength. However, due to the incomplete denoising process, such a method would generally result in blurry or unsatisfactory styles. They are faced with the dilemma that the visually appearing uh, viewpoint stylization and perfect geometric alignment cannot be achieved together all at one time. Alignment with texture blending. To solve this dilemma, they propose to break down the stylized panoramic texture generation in a dual process and then fuse the panoramic texture generation in a dual process and then fuse the t dual textures in a ge geometry, uh, geometri geometrical wear manner. Um, for brevity, we name these dual texture styles first panorama and align first panorama. See the first part, figure three, where the first one is synthesized in a way uh, which ensures high quality styles, and the second one is synthesized with a custom aligned diffusion process that tends to align the original scene more strictly while maintaining a similar style. Specifically for generating a live first panorama. I, A, we start by denoising on the rule of preference panorama by, but utilize multi-control techniques such as I, A is equal to F, C multiply with P, uh, C multiply with I, P, and T, I'm going to call that T for now, uh, multiply with I, S. Um, I keep forgetting what the symbol is. Um, hmm. Also, I can't copy that. Um, okay, so so dual texture alignment. We have the reference panel. This thing goes into panel diffusion, which generates the panorama. Then this this is style injected into a line diffusion, which then generates, which then aligns the first panorama. And then this then goes into the blended panel with the style first panel. And then a depth map edge detection is also utilized to analyze the depths of the image, which literally means as it sounds, the depth or the edges. 
um, and then we get an image that incorporates all of these activities. Um, so mitigate misalignment. Um, mitigate misalignment. So here we have a bunch of images. Um, preserve style, stylized details. Reference black and white for a line. After a line. Hmm. This one just doesn't seem real. Physically real. I don't know. There's something wrong about the physics in this image. Huh? What did you say? It looks friendly. Well, I guess you can't really. Well, I don't know. I don't think that's a good demonstration picture. It's hard to tell where the lamp is resting. Yeah. Um, to mitigate one well, another. Sure. To mitigate geometry texture misalignment, we first synthesize. What does that mean? We first synthesize style first panorama and align first panorama, and then blend these dual textures according to the depth edge detection, which brings aligned panoramic textures while preserving visually appearing stylized details. Alignment with dual texture, dual texture blending. To solve this dilemma, they propose to break the stylized panoramic texture generation in a dual process. Well, we already read this. Um, I, a, I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna feed this into GPT-4 and see if I'm doing it wrong. I have a feeling I'm doing it wrong. Um, Is that the image? Yeah. We'll write the equation in standard English. I was wrong. So the adjusted panorama represented by IA is equal to a function FC, which takes in parameters P, uh, the Kenny edge con control of IP represented by CIP, and the tau control of LS represented by TLS. I thought it was just doing multiplication, but no, it wasn't. Um, so they mitigate uh, geometry texture misalignment while maintaining the desired stylized details. Um, holistic texture propagation, panoramic texture projection through UV maps. Once the initial stylized panoramic view is synthesized, we project it to the visible area through UV maps in the panoramic space. In practice, we first obtain scene coordinates x, 3D position for valid pixels p in the corresponding UV map as x interp x interp map text text chord p and the dictionary of t, where text chord p is the texture coordinate of each p. 
and T in or is the max triangles. Maps text maps the textual coordinates into triangle vertices with barycentric weights, and each X is a barycentric interpolated with from the child's uh, vert uh, vertices. Next, for each X, we compute ray directions from the observing camera center C and then map the direction D C minus X, uh, the absolute value of C minus X to the primary space to ICO rectangular projection. I'm also going to feed this into GPT-4 and see if I'm right. Like, how do you say this in English? Um, let's see, let's see. The scene coordinate x is determined by interpolating the map texture using the function um, map text. The function takes in the texture coordinates of the point p denoted by text along with a set of mesh triangles. Yeah, I think I read that right. So next for each x we compute ray directions from the observing camera center c and the map the direction d equals C minus X divided by the absolute value. Oh, I already read this. We go through all the UV pixels with the visibility test and form an initial visibility mask. M in it vis on the UV space as M in it vis is a function applied to P, which equals one if uh, the absolute value of P minus X is less than uh, E or what is it? Epsilon, I think. Is that epsilon Greek symbol E? Um, it is epsilon. All right, so eta, zeta, epsilon. I didn't even know zeta was a letter in Greek. That's cool. I, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, so one, if the absolute value of P minus X less than epsilon, zero otherwise. We assign stylized panoramic colors to the UV space according to the initial development. Um, separate strategies for confidential and tiny areas by projecting initial scene texture to the scene. The main impression of the stylized space has already been shaped, while there are still some uncovered areas that need to be fulfilled. The gray region at the partially textured mesh, uh, previous methods uh, that use LDM for um, texturing mainly rely on impending with various area projection and masking methods. Um, so we take reference panorama before imitating unfilled areas in black color. So after imitating, wow, so they're just taking, they're unfilled areas in black color so the black basically means that like they could be filled up with something so unfilled areas in, in black color so they're this is what the the mask that they're doing they're masking so they're uh vision of the material yeah basically they're just the black parts they're just filling those in with stuff um Real UV text, CR, as stated earlier, which is um, a, style, a real UV texture, CR, and the stylized UV texture. Then you map a UV texture to scene coordinates X. And then we get a real world input as picture, training stage, supervised style. It could become anything. Uh, real world inputs this room uh, imitating stage uh, it added lamps a wooden thing and completely changed the roof uh, we first look at then during the training stage we chain an implicit texture imitating network from a, a 
visible stylus area using lifted ruled styles and coordinates. During the imitation stage, we feed the rural colors and coordinates into the network to imitate possible textures and unseen areas. So for root root scene texturing uh, with cluttered geometries, it relies on automatic impainting and cannot ensure proper texturing for thin structures. Duplicated impainting on the same area on the mesh surface would also result in a blurry appearance due to the inconsistency nature of latent diffusion models and impainting results. Therefore, they propose separate strategies for areas with different visibility. Instead of conducting and painting multiple times, we only impaint at the confidential areas, areas that is definitely free of occlusion and free and very few point viewpoints. They allow a novel implicit texturing network to smoothly fill the rest of the areas with possible appearance. Um, Um, so, where were we? It's just super laggy. I can't do anything. All right, nice. So confidential, confidential texture and painting. Given a partially textured mess, mesh, we first perform confidential texture and painting in the panoramic space. Um, we do not aim to fulfill every aspect of the space, but only cover the confidential areas that are totally free of occlusion when observing from new viewpoints, where the viewpoint can be selected by F SFM poses, which with furthest point sampling or interactive user selection. Basically what this means is they can choose where they want to look inside of the scene with some methods like SFM or interactive user selection. To begin with, for each viewpoint, we first determine the panoramic impainting mass from the new camera poses. Practically, we reuse the UV space initial visibility mass by regarding it as the UV texture and render the panoramic image on the current viewpoint, and then perform dilation and blurring to the image to obtain the MNIB, which then leverage the aware impainting LDMs, such as IMP equals FMP map to P, uh, IM, D, uh, M, and IP. Or IM is the rendered panoramic image with partially textured mesh. IMP is the impending output image. The impending result will not be fully projected by the stylized texture, but only regain confidential areas by UV space mass filtering. Um, M depth edge, which can be constructed by assigning the UV mass with panoramic depth edge detection. Second, we consider the surface normal and the distances by rejecting small gazing viewing angles. Our two face surface points, distance larger than 2.5 meters to form a VR mass. Um, they perform visibility tests on the impending views with a similar structure. Uh, which combine the structs of the impending visibility mask. They combine all the masks to achieve a confidential texture projecting areas in UV space, such as mconfig equals m, m depth edge, which is um, what does that symbol mean? I forgot. M is a part of List of logic symbols. Let's go over some logic, man. Change. Um, dude, are you seeing this? Look how many symbols of logic there are. This does not look logical to me yeah. at, at all. Too logical and operate. Um, so implies if then so you see like um, this we need the opposite of that one <laughs> um, 
Ah, uh, we're yeah. here physically. What happened? Oh. Wonder if there's a better way to like, look those up quickly. You just have a massive database of them. <laughs> there is no other way, man. Everything is just like there needs to be multiple of them. Like there needs to be like a database. This is probably one of the best I've seen. You'd also do um, calculus symbols, Wikipedia, and see if that works. Yeah, I think it does work. Hmm. Yeah, so you see like something like this. So the R that always comes up, that's a real number. C is a complex number. Uh, we have pi, we have golden ratio, which is theta most of the time. Uh, I or I is an imaginary unit. Um, oh, the, the T thing, that's actually tau. T-A-U in Greek. Uh, so changing space the space What happened? This all this all changes based on context, though. Yeah, but some of them will never change, <laughs> like the equal sign. <laughs> Maybe that one's the only one. Well, maybe. Um. I guess it depends on how many, whether you're signing equal to, or you can use equals as assignment as well. Yeah. Here's the, um, the sigma and the multiplication, which I always mess up. You have infinity, a bunch of arrows, which mean um, basically the limit of a function, differential calculus, we have the derivative or primes, the more primes each derivative, we have integral calculus, which are, I mean, three integrals, and that's pretty insane, man, what the fuck, so if I, <laughs> A volume integral refers to an integral over a three-dimensional domain. Oh, that's not bad, I think. It could be actually, no, it could be horrible. A volume refers to an integral over a three-dimensional domain. Calculate flux densities or calculate mass from a corresponding density function. So this is pretty important, this vector calculus symbols. So that's the upside down uh, triangle or pyramid means the gradient. Um, and then if you see multiplied V times F, that means the divergence. Um, then uh, the gradient times F, is the curl, which is this super cool. Um, the curl at the point in the field is represented by a vector whose length and direction denotes the magnitude. That's really cool. Then you have uh, vectors and matrices. This is just a vector, pretty simple. But then once you have shit like this, this is a matrix. Um, Oh, these are also pretty important. These two are mean stop product. Um, so the dot product is a just takes, it's just addition, I guess, basically. Um, then you have the cross product, which is Basically, multiplication. 
then if you have this, you have the didact part. Um, also, if the this thing that you see pop up all the time, the double line, that means a norm. Um, I always forget that one. And then there's a lot, the T is really important. The transposition is used a lot. Um, basically, it just flips a, a vector the other way around. So like you saw how like it was like horizontal now, it was horizontal and then it flipped. So basically like you're taking the diagonal and then you're flipping it on the diagonal. That is used a lot in machine learning, a lot. Basically almost every algorithm, every machine learning algorithm will use this in some capacity. Um, Yeah, but enough of these symbols. Um, Take the wrong experience. They created a new data set. On meeting room, living room, and bedroom. So living room, whoa. Meeting room, galaxy theme, MV diffusion texture. We compare scene level metering text with style mesh MV diffusion and text texture. Um, our captured GameSpot data set. Yeah. We could tell very easily that theirs is more detail. Look at that. Dude, it literally looks like you're in a a spaceship or something. Um, a regional scene style mesh. Um, a regional scene. <laughs> the cyberpunk one is really good. Cyberpunk team. Um, it's just need to release the code. Yeah, look how detailed this is. A little bit. Uh, there's obviously going to still be some problems, but it. I mean, with some fine tuning, this could be like ready to go in like a AAA video game. And this one too. That outside looks really good. Um. Minimalist sin. Dude, that looks amazing. That water there. That yeah. looks really good. Um, uh, hmm. Let's see. Scene rubber reconstruction. Of James Spot bedroom, the universe cube map texture. It's like a cube texture synthesis in different spaces. Um,
preserve global consistency and spatial coherence for the scene level mesh texturing task. The texture should first synthes be synthesized in a panoramic space with icon rectangular projection rather than using multi view fashion. Um, due to the discontinuity and unclear spatial semantic meaning, QMAP textures tend to produce excessive details on top of faces and to fail to make a smooth con content transition on disconnected edges, which results in a spurious textures on the roof and mixed tense textures on the chair. Generating textures in panoramic space like ours not only achieves better results, meaning what it lets a fine tuning lead diffusion model know that the upper image is the ceiling and the bottom image or areas of floor but also ensures global continuity and coherence. Um, the galaxy. So input stylized dream spot bedroom with transparent window. Then the input was panoramic galaxy by unconstrained diffusion. Yeah, dude, I would love to live in this house, just stuck in the middle of the universe. That'd be nice. Um, conclusion. We have proposed a novel text-driven indoor scene texturing framework which enables text, which enables to generate high-resolution semantic meaningful UV textures for high real-world scenes based on text prompts. The key insight for our work is to first synthesize a stylized panoramic view of the scene that already conveys a global consistent appearance and then propagates it to the rest regions. For texture propagation, we design novel conf confidential and painting and implicit imitating techniques which properly handle Cluttered rural geometry and maintain spatial coherence for occluded areas or thin structures. The resulting stylized texture models can be feasibly uploaded into HMD devices, which delivers immersive VR experiences. Despite the novel scene texturing capability provided by our method, it still has some limitations. The panoramic texture synthesized by our method already bakes the scene lighting effects um, with two viewpoint and paintings. Um, are we in the right page? No. So which cannot, um, which cannot support custom lighting or dynamic sharp shadows in the rendering pipeline. To ensure high quality texturing and a completely immersive VR experience, our method requires the input reconstruction to include real world textures and also rely on the quality of the scene of reconstruction. A complete scan scenes or methods does not support extra large rooms. The um, theater or church are out of their spaces. As such scenarios might need multiple partition stylized panoramas to fill the entire scene. They plan to support PBR texturing by fine tuning latent diffusion model with PBR based equal rectangular projections, which would be more compatible with modern, feasible, physically based rendering pipelines. Besides, we also incorporate our scene texturing into pipeline with a visual uh, positioning system so as to align the stylized scene with the physics real world on HMD devices, which could deliver appealing MR experiences. And that's it. Um, this paper, I would rate it a 7 out of 10. It might be state of the art, but there's no code. And yeah. it's very convoluted. There's a lot of scene. I, I, I think I've read the word scene representations a thousand times. Um, they could have provided an algorithm pseudocode to better show the algorithm. It's still really convoluted. Um, not really simple and direct. Um, but I think that the results are definitely show themselves and that's why it's a seven. Um, the results are really good. This is a step in the, this is definitely a step in the way of scene representation um, with, yeah, this is definitely a step in the right, in the way of scene uh, representation there's a lot that can be improved as always, but I think I think if they open source the code, <laughs> they could do better. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for reading. That was it was a good one. Definitely. Um, the biggest use cases I could see for this paper are generating scenes for video games. VR, of course, they're already doing VR. But the thing is, that's not really useful. Like, why are you gonna? Why are people gonna go into a VR just to walk around in a room? Are they playing like a room simulator? <laughs> like, you know, like there, there's the the only this would only could only really be useful in a game. Um, people aren't just gonna use a VR to just walk around a pretty dead space. With nothing to interact with. Uh, well, if it's well, this would work best with um, if MR mixed reality, where you could essentially just everyone just walks around with little neural links and puts a skin on their reality, essentially. Yeah, um, yeah that's also another good use uh, case. Yeah, that's that's yeah. a pretty good use case. It would be really cool if they could get the like the galaxy. Imagine you were in this room, but the galaxy was dynamic and it was moving around. Um, yeah, that would be super fucking cool. I would I would want to use this immediately. So like literally, imagine you're in this room, but like instead of this just being an image it's actually moving and things are happening it's yeah have to create like shader type figures and apply it to all the different parts but yeah definitely doable yeah so games there's this yeah oh there's this plugin that i use for unreal that like you can in real time you can update textures um, dynamically and, and uh, if this could generate just you know how the they'll generate videos but they're kind of just images layer after layer you could you could add something like that fairly easily and generate like a pseudo video texture world um, yeah that would be nice yeah, so um, I definitely think games, AR, games, AR, what else? I think that's it. Games and AR would be the two biggest use cases for this model. Yeah.